videos? Or just like mm-hmm. it, it, half of his, uh, you, you know who PewDiePie is, eh? Yeah, I say PewDiePie, but... PewDiePie, yeah. PewDiePie. I saw the one where he had uh, the truck. The truck? Or not truck, it was a car. He's uh, bragging about buying a car, and he's like, it's a uh, Nissan. <laughs> yeah, I remember watching that and laughing. It was pretty good. Yeah. He, he is pretty funny. Like, you take away the... Oh, yeah, he's hilarious. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think he, uh, classic cancelled culture, had a bunch of stuff pulled out of context, and oh yeah, people oh, yeah. shat on him. Yeah, there's, um, I'm completely away from my microphone there, but that's fine. Um, no, there was one time where uh, he, uh, he, he he did say the N-word on the internet, but the thing is, it wasn't by accident, because uh, I don't think it was a live stream, it was just like a full-on like reaction video that he was watching and stuff like that, so like he would have had to edit it and everything, but he just kept it in... Um, it purposely so uh yeah i think he did that just for the sake of you know being edgy on purpose oh yeah yeah i think he did that just to get more views because you know because then it causes things in the media it's like did he actually say it so then you know a bunch of more people are gonna mm-hmm. go check it out See, i didn't know about that i just something about him wearing a old german uniform oh really I, Some, I, I, <laughs> yeah something about people like saying he wore a nazi outfit but Oh, it was just a uniform. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. What he's Swedish. This was or is he Finnish? No, he's Swedish, isn't he? Is he? He's one of those. He's he's Nordic. <laughs> <laughs> he's something. Anyways, everybody, welcome uh to uh the the Christmas special of um the Forbidden Cast. Yeah. As you can see, you can actually see this, this time around. Probably. Um, Part of me, I'm probably not out of frame, but so much of me hopes that I'm like half out. No, no, no. Because it'd be awesome. You're, yeah. I feel like I'm more out of frame than yeah. anything. Because like you're like perfectly in frame. Like You can see the, the little stocking there. Unfortunately, you can't see the actual nice uh, little Christmas lights there around the window mm. frame. But yeah, I'm nice. hoping I'm hoping I'm in there. I mean, that's fine. You, Everybody hears my voice. Uh, enough anyway so yeah <laughs> that's, that's all they come for <laughs> yeah. so yeah anyways yeah so a merry christmas and happy holidays everyone uh we hope it's it's merry and bright is that what the how the song goes yeah, yeah. something like that some one of those definitely songs. words somewhere yeah. Yeah. yeah obviously i'm joined here by my good pal lucas he's been on here three times now well this will be the third huh yeah how about that yeah Feels like you've been on more. I mean, technically he has because the old Forbidden Cast. Whenever yeah. we this is, was the kind of the actual thing, except for minus the microphones. Yeah, we uh we just used my phone. <laughs> it was, I don't know. What? It was very green. There was less like stuff used. In it. Yeah, it was. It was not. We, we were thinking of the environment. Yeah, exactly. Less use, less uh, technology, less yeah. energy. <laughs> yeah it wasn't a lack of money or effort no no or uh yeah technical skill or yeah. anything and by the way um for anybody who might be wondering no this isn't my usual room that i record in i'm, I'm at my parents place right now i thought you were gonna say it's my christmas room yeah <laughs> that's what i should have said yeah i was gonna say like where's the eggnog didn't oh. you do like a special thing last year? Where you oh made yes, eggnog? the wizards nog. Yes, indeed, yeah. I did. Um, well, yeah, that's a good, that's a good, uh, valid point. Cut. <laughs> yeah, restart. We're gonna just do a retake. <laughs> we gotta get shit faced on wizards nog for yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We can't do that though. I gotta, I gotta drive Lucas home. Yeah, it's fine. Drinking and driving's fine. <laughs> I'm kidding. I hope that I hope that was a, understood as a joke. That may have not translated. <laughs> that might have went over a few people's heads. Yeah. For the record, <laughs> I didn't mean those things I said. <clears throat> uh, well, are, are you having a good Christmas or holiday season so far? I'd say. Yeah. 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 How was your Hanukkah? I mean, as good as it can be for being non-existent. Yeah. Can't be bad if nope. it doesn't exist. Exactly. Right? Yeah. There we go. I know where. Uh... Yeah. They call that checkmate. 
<laughs> I don't know. We, we both celebrate Christmas. So if we say Christmas instead of holidays, I, I'm not going to apologize because that's what we celebrate. <laughs> yeah. Well, whatever. You do what yeah, you do. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't know. That, that, that's one thing I don't understand. Would, would you be offended if, like, if you said Merry Christmas to someone and they were, like, you know, celebrated Kwanzaa or something like that, would, would you be offended by it? I don't know why you're on this, like, Kwanzaa bender lately. But, oh yeah, that's right. My last podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, because like for so like I don't know. I don't know what I didn't know what Kwanzaa was until I actually looked it up. Yeah, it's like that African one. Right? Yeah, it's like to celebrate their culture and everything like that, yeah. which is it's, it's pretty cool actually. But um, uh, yeah, no, I wouldn't be offended if somebody said yeah, no, Happy like, Holidays, me or Merry Christmas. I've yeah. said both. Yeah, and I really don't care. Like yeah, like I don't know. For me, the thing was because I remember. I remember there were shows, because I know American Dad made, like, a whole episode about it where, like, Stan, like, the dad, he was, like, getting offended by that. And the thing is, it's, like, the show is, like, based off of, like, you know, satire, right? So, it's, like... Yeah, it's a there, comedy. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's, there's actual people who are offended by people saying Happy Holidays rather than Merry Christmas, you know? Like, I don't know. I don't, I don't see the whole point. Like, there's more than... I don't know. I guess that happened... A while At some ago. point, yeah, people started getting bugged about the Merry Christmas thing. I remember teaching in elementary school. Like you teaching? Yeah, this was oh, probably really? seven years ago. Well, I taught guitar, right? I yeah. know that, but I didn't think you were going to go to the point where you're teaching kids about holidays. and. No, no. Well, kind of. Like, there was one school <laughs> where they, I guess, they had no Christmas decorations, because oh, yeah. there were two kids whose parents made a big stink about their religion, so it's... I don't know if it was Jehovah or whatever. Not to oh. like throw them under the bus, but... Well, doesn't Jehovah just not celebrate anything? I don't know. Because I know... Cause... It doesn't matter to me. That's true. Anyways, I don't, I'll, I'll let you finish your story so yeah. we don't lose track. <laughs> yeah. No, please keep interrupting. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was that you had yeah. to say? <laughs> Random statement in the middle of your thought. <laughs> Yeah, no, they just didn't have any, like, Christmas decorations set up because these kids' parents made a, uh, I don't know, they pulled the re- religion card, I guess. Oh, uh, okay. And then there was a few kids who were actually bummed out about it, but I remember having a talk with all of them about how, like, yeah, I mean, it, all right, it sucks a bit, like, it's cool getting into the sort of festive spirit mm-hmm. of everything, but decorations on or off a door kind of... Don't. In the grand scheme of things, like they sort of don't matter. Like they might make it more fun for the last week, but yeah, you know, man. But yeah. at the same time, the main thing is, I remember having talks. Not that any of the kids were like upset with the kids specifically, but I definitely mentioned. I remember having a few talks about, you know, like if you are upset, just know not to be upset with the kids because it wasn't their choice. Yeah, you know it. More than likely was the parents making a big stink Mm -hmm. to the principal and possibly the school board. And, you know, they're they're probably going to fold pretty quick when parents are complaining. Yeah. But uh, don't be upset with the kids because the kids didn't choose any of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All I was going to mention earlier before when, when I was interrupting you <laughs> was um uh, in uh, in Dave Mustaine's uh, book there like his Mustaine book he because he was brought up as a Jehovah um uh, and what he was explaining in his book is that it was just as a kid it felt extremely weird you know having other kids in his class being you know being saying happy birthday to and stuff like that and like him not ever having that and kids talking about like oh how they're gonna have a birthday party and all that oh, yeah, stuff because they don't celebrate birthdays or right? anything because even yeah. that too because even that uh were i don't know i guess whenever you're doing the morning anthem or whatever whatever the uh pledge of allegiance they're yeah. supposed to do something with their arms and like dave mustaine had to just stand there with his arms down and he remember he remembers being getting picked on for that being because you know because it's different you know <laughs> Yeah, I remember somebody saying, they were talking about how when they were kids, there was a couple kids who had to leave the room for the anthem and stand outside Mm. in some sort of, again, not the kids' choice, not their act of defiance, but it's like, let's, 
use our heads here for a second and realize that school speaker systems, like the PA is all one thing. So it's not like you're standing in the hallway, not listening to. Yeah. It's going to be in the hallway too. (laughs) You know, but believe it. Like, I don't know. Like I, I don't, I just, I will never understand that. Like having to like, I get, I get people's have beliefs and stuff like that, but like why single out your kids like that? Like, that's just like asking for them to get picked on. (laughs) <laughs> like i don't think it's done it's, with an intention of asking them to get picked no on, no but no it's more like i for those parents like they would have grown up in if anything a more strict version yeah of that religion regardless yeah. of what it is yeah so they're mm-hmm. just gonna kind of like repeat that yeah 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 it was it's funny actually the other day i uh uh, one of my high school friends, uh, I don't know, I don't know why we'd always just pick on him and stuff like that. And there was, <laughs> there was this one time, uh, where I had asked him if he was a Jew. I don't think I meant anything like anything malicious by it, but I had just had full on asked him if he was a Jew. Cause I don't think, I think was what his it, name, Kyle, it was. Yeah, that's a total like Cartman move. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and the thing, okay, so yeah, that goes perfectly into this. Um, but uh, yeah, because I think his parents didn't. Well, his mom, because his parents were divorced, but his mom didn't have any Christmas decorations up for yet. And uh, I, was, I think that's what it was. I was just like, "Why? Like you Jewish or something?" And then he, because his name was Kyle, and he also did watch South Park. He was just like, "Yeah, no, my dad's Jewish, so like we can't like I, I don't celebrate Christmas." I'm just like, "Oh, okay." And I didn't really think of anything. And for some reason, as a kid, and up till like this year, I always thought he was like legit because I didn't really put two and two together. <laughs> and, then, and then I just, when we were hanging out last, he, uh, I had mentioned it. I was like, oh, yeah, like, does dad have a Hanukkah? And he was like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, isn't your dad Jewish? And he was like, no. He's like a hardcore Christian. I'm like, oh, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> then were you just saying that you're Jewish because Kyle from South yeah, Park is yeah. Jewish? He's just like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was stupid. Yeah, yeah, well, the flip side of that coin, too, is people who... Cause, so there's the, oh, you don't celebrate Christmas. Like, you know, I shouldn't celebrate it because you don't. Like, that's unfair. Yeah. But then the flip side of that coin is people cling to their celebration of Christmas. You know? It's yeah. like, you can't both sides everybody chill out like yeah. when in any situation is the answer to anything where there's like more than like one side of like how about we all just calm down yeah exactly. they do their thing we do ours like, yeah if it's not you know we're not going full purge here yeah it's, you can do your whatever and it's all good <laughs> oh fuck yeah merry christmas everybody happy holidays yeah. <laughs> getting deep on the christmas yeah. episode uh, well we could get dark too because there's a lot of like things about uh <laughs> holidays like not necessarily being a great time of the year for a lot of people yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like i think statistically there's a bunch of like having relatives together and a lot of alcohol involved there's a lot of uh police are busy yeah oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so happy holidays yeah i mean that that's like a, that's a constant theme within like holiday movies too where like people need to stop at the liquor store because they need to yeah. <laughs> get along with their relatives <laughs> yeah yeah well, you don't need christmas for that yeah no <laughs> no um uh, what was it there's actually one cool story well it was like a true story like in world war one whenever uh, oh yeah they took a break from fighting for christmas yeah and they were like you know it's like playing soccer in no man's land and everything like that like that's a really cool story i like that and then yeah i think the few years after that whenever the war was still happening they just well no because that's whenever the the rule of switching battalions bringing people from the back to the front and switching so no one can ever make um uh like <laughs> friends with the enemy yeah Okay. Basic no, because uh, that that that's the actual thing. I remember learning that in school, because um, because after after that Christmas, like you know, on the twenty sixth, and everything was over, like yeah, there's gonna be a real big like, what are we doing? Here, yeah, like they they were like 
that we're at war right now. We're supposed to be killing each other, but we just spent all night sharing drinks and mm-hmm. hanging out together. <laughs> like, I don't want to shoot, you know. Yeah, that tells you. Like, I've actually, anytime working outside and the weather is terrible, mm-hmm. I always think of, like, guys in trenches in World War One. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Always, like, just slopping through the mud on a miserable day, like, just salt dragon brush like mm. getting chewed up by bugs yeah. especially later in the year in the fall oh when it's yeah. cold it just must have been the worst time ever. yeah well i mean yeah it's it's i mean there's people who fall on like just, they fell in the, they didn't even get shot they just fell in the mud and got stepped on and drowned to death in the mud like I feel like there should have been better coordination. Yeah. <laughs> at that point. Again, having not been there, who am I to say? But yeah. Like, Pretty crazy, though. You know what the, the problem was? Mm. They didn't have metal. If they had mosh pits, they would have known. As That's soon as true. somebody goes down, you pick them up. Yeah. Up a brother out. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Cause yeah, because what? I can't remember. What year was the First World War? 1914 to 1918. 1914? Okay. Yeah. And was it was it ni- 1940, the Second World War, whenever that was declared? Uh, 39 to 45. 39 to 45. Yeah, okay. I think the states joined a little bit later. But... Mm. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah, no bueno. No. A lot of no bueno. No way. All right. Let's change the mood a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> well, do... yeah, start talking about like music stuff. Music stuff, yeah. yeah. You're uh, working on an album. We got to do some shameless self plugs here. Buddy. Oh, I guess so, yeah. I don't know. Should I be like showing shit off and everything? or uh, You I... can if you want to. Yeah, okay. Well, um, I haven't recorded any acoustics or clean stuff yet, but uh, this here's my. I think I've shown this before. On an old. The Deansky. Yeah. Um. Yeah, this is gonna this is gonna be the sixth string on the album on my second Celestial Quest album, uh, just um kind of almost done being recorded. Nice. Yeah. Um, uh, What's yeah. the body made out of on that? I'm not too sure actually. This looks like a weird maple or something, it's like it died. Cause like, I don't know. It's got an interesting grain. Yeah, very nice. I don't know if I'm making. I don't like know that. if it would be maple. No. Cause this is like, I mean, I know you can stain it, but like that's still too dark for maple. I think. I don't know. Dude, I, I feel like maple is a weird wood for an acoustic body. Yeah. You can kind of do whatever you want, but. But it might also honestly just be a veneer. That might be all. It might be yeah. too. Because I know my um, I know my ghost horse is a maple veneer, so it's supposed to look like uh. Maple top, yeah, but it's, it's not. Yeah. So that. That's might... cool. Yeah. And that's so. acoustic electric? It is acoustic electric indeed. 25 and a half inch scale length? No idea. I know, you know, I, I should actually start paying attention to scale lengths, but I never do. <laughs> that's okay. I'm just loving busting your balls on the specs. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, this is, a, this is a good thing. It's going to be it's nice. It's still tuned to to D standard there, but. Ooh, very nice. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's going to be tuned up to E, but. Which, oh, yeah, let's show off some strings. Go for some sponsorships. Yeah. Let's do it. Uh, These are old strings or pretty new? Those are old strings. That was... Oh, yeah, because you haven't recorded an acoustic yet. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, actually, those strings... This isn't known to the public, but I recorded a uh, four-song little cover EP of a bunch of old uh, acoustic tunes um, for my girlfriend and I's second year anniversary oh yeah i'll put that goddamn gem sound effects in there um uh uh, actually funny story before i'm gonna cut myself off this time funny story with that i i made it on a put it on a cd for her and she used to have this car um and then whenever we moved down to ottawa she had left the cd inside of the car when it went to go be crushed so she just doesn't have we're not gonna read too much into that (laughs) <laughs> apparently it wasn't very good <laughs> well it was appreciated for sure yeah but anyways uh these are the strings i'm going to be using for how funny would it be is it? if it didn't actually get crushed she just she like just threw, threw it out <laughs> and that's just yeah sorry babe it uh was in the car i loved it so much i just never took it out of my car and then you know i whoopsied <laughs> 
uh, yeah that's okay it's okay i wasn't very proud of it anyways actually i thought about releasing it once but i don't i'm glad know. you didn't yeah like the the, <laughs> the instrumentation is actually good I, I listened to it not too long ago but just the the vocals i, I need to, to be able to not sound to be like honest, that but you got a whole bunch of cool crack and if it's just in the finish not a big deal yeah you ever stick a flat like a light in to see if it's shining through uh i haven't but the thing about that i never that was not new that was a hand me down from two people but this split that's running like the length of it mm. was not there before yes it was it was really? absolutely oh yeah really yeah oh yeah no because um because my one of my friends tyler he bought it off a guy from ebay with those cracks on there all of these cracks maybe not all like of all them. the three here but there, there was a, a definite a couple of big ones there i think it's, it is just in the finish though i don't believe it's all the way through um hmm. but uh, yeah and then and then he wasn't playing it too much and then my dad bought it off of him that was actually a christmas gift huh. yeah merry from, christmas from wow <laughs> yeah ebony fretboards don't know what probably not stainless definitely not stainless steel but yeah it's an it's a nice guitar it sounds good it's nice and full and it looks cool yeah we did a fair few gigs and you played that yeah that was my back my, in the day my main guy yeah um anyways i was, I was gonna say this like five minutes ago but these are the yeah, acoustic strings okay. we're even now yeah <laughs> <laughs> these are the Dardarios. i thought i bought the Dardario nyxls but i bought the uh xts by accident Wow, these are their new ones, though, right? Yeah, those are the brand new, like, acoustic strings there. I also bought some for the 12 string as well. 11 to 52, 80, 20 bronze. Yeah. Coded? Yeah, XT's the coding. Extended I, I, life. I think so. Not too sure. I do like the Dario's, so... Oh, yeah, lifespan treatment on every string in the set. Yeah. Yeah. So, the Dario, whenever, uh, whenever I get over a 1,000 views, you can start sponsoring me if you want it. <laughs> Yeah, not even kidding. To be honest, like, I don't know. I say I don't, I don't really say Dario, Diadario, Diadario. Nah, there's an apostrophe in there, but whatever. Didario. It doesn't matter. Tomato, tomato. I, I've I've always heard people pronounce it Dario. Yeah, so, I've heard a lot of yeah. people say that too. Yeah. But uh, yeah, twelve string, ten to forty seven. Yeah, those are super light. Yeah. Not super light on the top end. Forty seven is no. pretty light on the bottom end. Yeah. But yeah, twenty bronze, same thing. This here be the twelve string. This isn't mine. This is his. Um, he's lending it to me for this. Just Dude, that guitar sounds good. I know, man. And yeah, like I, I haven't changed. Obviously, I haven't changed the strings yet. But Dude, those strings have been on it for like since I probably bought it, and I bought it when I was. 21 so we're looking at eight years eight year old strings and they sound that good tells you how little i played it yeah <laughs> but yeah man I, I, like the strings sound okay but the guitar sounds good. oh yeah that's it just sounds so nice and full yeah it's another one too like people say Tack for short. Tack of mine. Tack of mine was always what I kind of grew up with hearing. Okay. Some people say tack of meanie. Really? Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Tack but, of mine yeah, for sure. Tack, <laughs> tack and co. Tack and co. And uh, tackle. This company at one point. Went bankrupt? No. <laughs> it. Uh, <laughs> I think my dad has a six-string guitar from this company where there was a cease and desist order from Martin. Oh, really? Because their headstocks were bang on. Really? Or maybe not bang on, but close enough to where Martin was like, you settle down yeah. now. <laughs> You're cutting into our sales, but... Oh, this is... Yeah, because you, you said that the, this is a pretty affordable guitar, eh? It's not like anything crazy or... I paid two hundred and ten bucks for it. Yeah, that's that's pretty affordable. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because I was—I don't know how old this. This is like thirty years. I don't know if it's forty years old. This is an old mm. guitar, though. Oh, is it? Okay. Oh yeah, real old. It's in really good shape for being an older. Yeah, well, that's everybody before me, and then me keeping it in a case. Yeah, mm, fair enough. 
But the other thing about this guitar too is like do like an F major bar chord like here. It's nice. Like it's not. There's not a pain in the ass effort. No. Yeah, that, that was the first thing I noticed. Yeah, because I was about to buy a like a five hundred dollar Yamaha uh, twelve string, and I had mentioned that to you, and you're like, I have a twelve string sitting at home, not doing anything. <laughs> yeah, you save your money. There's actually a song by the Tea Party? Green something? <laughs> Is it Dead or Alive? By Bon Jovi. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about that. No, I know. There's some other song <laughs> that uh, it's done on a 12 string. I'll try to find it afterwards, but it's a yeah. killer tune. It's tuned to, like, I think, Open C, maybe. Oh, really? On a 12 string, and it just sounds deadly. That's sweet. Yeah. Yeah, twelve strings. I don't. You don't see too many people playing these. Yeah, because unlike that guitar, most of them the action sucks. That's true. Like yeah, like I mean, here's just like an A major. Yeah. No. But the more in the middle of the neck that you play, the more play you have in the string. So doing an F major on all the, the way in the bottom, like, down on the first fret. If you do that and it feels good, that's almost like the you litmus know test for yeah. that. Yeah, no, this is really nice. I'm going to be doing some recording with this one as well. Yeah. yeah. I actually wrote the intro on this thing. I'm not going to play it. It's oh, that was crew. almost a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> there, here, here, I'll do it again. I'll play the first three notes of it. No, that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even do it now. There you go. That's it. That's all you get. The next time you play that, does the last note in that sequence change? Yes. Do you know what it is? No, but it just sounds like something you do. <laughs> You're already picking up my, my, the way I write music. Yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, like what? What are the first three? Uh, open E. Yeah. And then... Second fret? You no. Know, on the uh, G there. Yeah. Oh, wait, no. I'm wrong. I'm an idiot right here. Okay. Yeah. So you... So yeah. Like power four, basically. And then this one. While you're playing octa, so open E. Yeah. Oh, second e. fret on the D. Yeah. Is that the next note? No. No? Because there's still... In this sequence, there's still one more note being played after those three. Okay. Yeah. No. You're getting close with that string, though. Yeah? So yeah. it's just another E. So technically... Yeah. It's all this and it, this. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well. You're wrong. Buy the album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. What else? Well, yeah, smash it around. <laughs> <laughs> Did I hit the, the camera stand? This is going to be awesome because the whole camera will yeah. <laughs> do that for five seconds. Are we going to keep going on the guitars? I could. I could do that. Should I? I feel like I should. Might as well. Yeah. <laughs> you could also move the 12 string to the free slot so it's easier to move the others around it. See, minimizing this, the chance of hitting things, but this is why I keep you around. Yeah, that's why they pay me the big bucks. I l was with my buddy today. You almost got that, but <laughs> my uh, <laughs> driving with my buddy, and he went picked up some food from Eve's. And yeah. when we got back to his place, I just to be nice immediately went into the back seat, grabbed the stuff, and he looked at me. He's like, "What are you doing?" I was like, "I'm grabbing the rest of the stuff you bought, dude." Yeah. He's like, "Oh." I was going to make two trips, one later, after I remembered that I bought all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, so what do we got here? What's the body made out of? Mahogany. Mahogany. Mahogany body and neck. And a fretboard? No. Nope. Or no. is it? Laurel. Laurel. Yeah. So like the, basically the new equivalent to rosewood because rosewood's endangered. Wow. 
It's too expensive. <laughs> Anyways, this is a, a Jackson five string. Huh? I forgot what the number is. It wouldn't say on the head back. The of the serial head? No, because that's just the uh, just a serial number. Yeah. Yeah. Does everybody want to steal my bit? <laughs> active pickups, eh? They're not actually. It's active EQ. That's what the battery's for. Yeah. So passive hmm. pickups, but active EQ. So if the battery dies, the pickups still work. I hope so, because I did. The battery hasn't died yet. I haven't tried that out yet. You um, could even just pull the battery and see if it still works. That's true. That's weird. Active EQ. Mm hmm. So the the pickups don't require any of the nine volt. I guess not. I'm not too sure how that works. I, at least that's what I'm pretty sure. Whenever I read the website, that's what it said. Um, I could be wrong. Mm. I could be just a complete idiot, which I'm most likely. But um, at least I'm pretty sure that's what I read. So interesting, because that, that's not the first time I've heard of active EQ on a bass, though. So, but active EQ without the pickups being active, so that's what sounds weird. But mm, yeah, know. maybe I too am an idiot. Yeah, <laughs> a couple of monkeys. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, no, I, I really, really like, dig this bass. It's, it's really comfortable. The neck's really thin. Um, it doesn't feel too wide for a five-string. Like that, my other five-string, it's a PV BXP something. Um, uh, the problem that I had with it, I felt like the neck, I feel like most five-strings are going to have this issue. It, it felt too wide for me, hmm. for my little dinky hands. Um, but this feels really nice. feels really natural. I wonder if that's a radius issue. It might be. Flatter radius versus wider. smaller radius yeah because the smaller radius like the seven and a quarter vintage necks mm. those are great for getting your thumb up and over because okay. the fretboard curves more so it's easier it's like it's curving into your thumb more whereas mm. if it's a flatter radius like the mark holcomb 20 inch radius yeah it's just super flat oh, okay so yeah, mm -hmm. i don't know if it's a radius issue or if it is an actual like just width issue it might be because because i know most of jackson's i think almost all of jackson's guitars like in, including bass always have the compound radius compound hmm. fretboard um okay so that might be why it might be why i don't know but anyways, really nice. I don't think, again, don't think it's stainless steel frets because they look kind of dirty already. And I mean, I haven't cleaned them yet. And they, they, well, they, I think stainless steel frets can still get dirty. Yeah, that's true. Um, but like, I don't know, like sometimes, sometimes on frets, like especially like cheaper frets, like they start to get like an oxidization kind of uh, mm, coat on yeah, them. That sort of green. That Yeah, that nasty. Going. Yeah. I thought... Yeah, I thought stainless steel, the big thing with those was they don't wear as quick. Mm -hmm. That's true. Um, I, I do think they do shine up clean up, cleaner, though, because I think the only guitar that I own that actually has stainless steel is my uh, my Chapman. And oh, yeah. those ones there, whenever I do clean them, like they look like they're brand new still. Whereas with some of my other guitars that have been, you know, had a little bit of wear or tear mm -hmm. on them, like they don't, even after I polished them for a while like they don't look as bright and shiny hmm. but again i might just be not scrubbing them not enough um but yeah no it's pretty nice bass it's got a three band eq so bass metal treble and then each of the pickups got a volume and everything um it's 24 fret which i was telling lucas earlier whenever i let him check it out this is about the only instrument that i don't feel well stringed instrument like guitar like I've said before, I feel like every guitar should be 24 fret just for the sake of, you know. You're one of those guys. I am. Yeah. But this thing here, this does not need a 24 fret, I don't feel. It can, honestly, it could end at the 20th fret and I think it would be fine. <laughs> it's enough frets. Because <laughs> I don't know, like, you can be up here. But I mean, how many bass players are going to be? Billy Sheen, Victor Wooten. That's true. But even then, like, I don't know. Like, I guess. Yeah, you can do something. Cliff like, Burton. Jason do some, Newstead. Yeah, but like. Rob Trujillo. <laughs> 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 Just throwing me dirt. <laughs> You're like the Tobey Maguire in Spider-Man. I'm going to put some Throwing dirt, dirt in your face. Put some I don't remember that line being in the movie, but. It is. Seeing clips afterwards of that. Yeah. Um, just like. That's terrible writing. I know. It's so funny, though. <laughs> Ooh, there's some dirt in your eyes. Dirt in your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. This is yeah, it's nice. It's a nice base. I don't know what else to say about it. I do love the color. I mean, the first thing that like made me want this thing is the color. I love the gold with the uh, brown. Yeah, gold brown. It's good. It's a good combo. Good combo. The black like hardware. The, uh, the uh, almost artisan series, old Gibsons, I think, but definitely Lee Malia from Bring Me the Horizons. Uh, Explorer, RD, and Les Paul had the uh, brown look with the gold hardware oh really fancy yeah. inlay stuff again like the mm-hmm. artisan series from i think the 70s gibson did that okay but yeah yeah it looks cool hmm. golden brown very nice yeah and very the pick guard nice. usually pick guards like that look weird to me but it doesn't look that weird on that it, yeah no it suits it it's very it's very formal looking base if you it ask could me. be the binding too like the the white of the pick guard matches mm. with the binding on the neck and the headstock that's but. true yeah Maybe yeah. balances it out a bit aesthetically. Yeah. Do you like binding? That's a question I, w- I want to keep asking more guitar players because some guitar players despise the look of binding. They make uh, they say that they, it makes it look cheap. I personally think the binding makes it look nicer. It lo- it just makes it look more complete to me. Anyways. Well. Oh. You're gonna both say something controversial. Do I have to turn the camera off? <laughs> Well, <laughs> not that controversial. I don't really care. Yeah. I mean, in, in the end, it, not it, to sound. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but like, well, <clears throat> there's a book that I read as a kid. It was, uh, actually, I will interrupt you once. You mother. Keep that thought in yeah. mind. So the only time that I do feel like binding looks off and weird is on like a maple fender neck. I do like just a kind of full-on wood look. Even if it's a black binding? Are you thinking white binding? Neither. Just like the natural maple fretboard maple neck. Because it like makes it look like it's all one piece. And I, I, I like that personally. Hmm. Yeah. But that's the only time. Any other time, 24 frets, get the binding on there. That's what's up. Exactly. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but yeah, that... Uh, I read a book. It was like the Aragon book. I don't know if anybody read it. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The the dragon yeah. find the dragon egg, the blue yeah. dragon egg, and there was a part where he ends up going and like needs to have a sword made for him. Okay, and then like the person making the sword for him says like, "So what do you want?" Yeah. And he starts saying, "Oh well, I think like this would look really good." And I don't know if the person smacked him upside the head or not, but the blacksmith was like smarting up. Looks have nothing to do with it. Yeah, like it's about how it feels mm, you know how it feels and so is used having the binding thing in mind i think that looks don't really matter really fall down the importance list when it comes to yeah. stuff like this like how does it feel like who cares how it looks it yeah. has to sound good it doesn't yeah. have to look good yeah you know yeah which i you know honestly i do agree with you but like i don't know i do like the way an instrument looks too yeah but i mean at the same time like i'll look at like i have a strat that's the maple neck with no binding and it's a white mm. finish on the body and it's yeah. like about as plain as plain can be and yeah. I'll, I'll still just like look at the contours of you know like the belly cut where your arm rests for that curve on it there and like still like it's funny i had one of my students one time he mentioned that when he's done playing, he'll just look at his guitar for a bit before yeah. putting it away. And that's, yeah, dude, it happens to all of us. Yeah. Like, we yeah. literally <laughs> will just look at our guitars for yeah. a bit. Yeah. Yeah. No, I do that too. Sometimes, like, back home in my actual, like, home studio there, I, I like, I have a few guitars up on the wall and I'll just sit in my room after I'm done recording a podcast or something like that and just stare at them on my wall, like, to admire them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But yeah, okay. So here I'll put it in this way of, in 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 this way, um, if say you're making one from scratch, and then like, if I'm making one from scratch, no, 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 but like binding because that saves the whole process. But anyways, but oh, you know what binding is good for? Was that hiding messy fret work? That's true. That's true. Yeah. So not (laughs) knocking Jackson made in Indonesia. (laughs) But if your frets stick out a bit and they cover that up with a bit of binding, mm. it's a workaround. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Personally, I think it did look sleek. 
Like it looks binding. like sometimes it looks cool, sometimes it doesn't. Like mm-hmm. I have a Les Paul and that would have the you know the binding on it. And yeah. Oh yeah. I'm not pro it. I'm not against it. It's yeah. just sort of like in, uh, if like it's there, it's there. You don't really give yeah. a shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty. Well, there we go. That was a good. Course. I think most of my guitars don't have binding though. Being mostly strats, a couple. That's true. Tellies. My bases don't have binding. Although my PRS ones have binding, yeah. and so does my Les Paul. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember if my Jackson does, and I don't remember if my Your... RL 600 does. Because you only got the one Jackson, eh? Yeah. The Rhodes? Yeah, it's got yeah. binding. Yeah, it has binding? Yeah, oh yeah. It's a white binding on a oh, white okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like a little bit off-white colored. Yeah. To the, yeah, the paint job, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I think... Yeah, because it's like a cream binding instead of like a white binding. Just which, on the neck, though. Yeah. 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 It's a nice guitar. I like that yeah, one. Yeah, it's been sitting in the case for a while. Yeah. <laughs> poor thing. <laughs> yeah, well, they're all poor things now. Yeah. Yeah. We should we should bring that over sometime. We'll uh, we'll do a review on it or something. Yeah, anytime you want any pedals or amps or guitars, man, let me know and you can just mm-hmm. review them because... Yeah, I mean, I got, like, still tons that I got to do, but, yeah. <laughs> got to get around to doing them. Yeah. <laughs> All right. People have seen this one before. No one's going to hear me right now. That's fine. Have they? They've seen that before? Oh, yeah, I've done a bunch of reviews with this thing. Oh, you played them in the reviews, but you didn't review them. Yeah, I've never, yeah, I've never done a review on it yet. Maybe I will. Someday. Someday I will. That guitar is a cool story. It does have a cool story. Um, should I tell the story first? Should I just... It doesn't matter, I guess. Anyways, here's the story. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think... Do you, you, you might remember more than I do. Anyways, I remember going down... Whenever we started hanging out, he was working at a guitar store... Um, and uh, and I went down. And I remember I was talking to you about was it the Brendan Small guitar that has a silver burst? Ghost horse? No, it was the Thunder Horse. Oh yeah, Thunder that's, Horse. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. that's all he had. Yeah, you mentioned time. that uh, silver bursts were he, cool. Yeah, I was I was really into silver bursts um, for two reasons actually, because of the Brendan Small Thunder Horse, and then my dad also used to have a uh, a proper Gibson. Les Paul with a silver burst on it, and then he had sold well traded it um, with uh, Ian. There's a super cool story to that too. Yeah, there is, and then yeah, for a Kramer guitar. Um, uh, but uh, but yeah, so I always wanted a silver burst because just really stellar looking instruments I find. Um, uh, and then I think the same day I get a message on Facebook from Lucas. He sends me a picture. And then it was this guitar <laughs> lying on top of an amp or something like that. And then, and then yeah, immediately I was just like, you're kidding, right? <laughs> and you're, and you're like, no, nah, it's at the store. And then I had asked you, because the deciding factor for me, if I was actually going to go down there and buy it or not, was if it had the coil splitting. Mm. I, I, had, that's, I had asked you, I was like, does it have the coil split? And then you didn't answer me for till the next day. And then you show you texted me again. You're like, yeah, it does. And I was just like, oh shit. So then I went down and spent six hundred dollars. <laughs> but which is honestly for how much instrument this is and how good it's been to me, like that's really good price. Like I don't have any problem spending that kind of money on something that's last me this long and still sounds and looks as good as it does. Yeah. Well, the other like the cool part about that for me is there was a guy he came in he's actually quite a collector himself and he uh he was gonna part with it and his whole thing was like wanting to find it a good home kind mm-hmm. of thing and yeah like the day that we had talked it about talked it. about it a silver burst shows up <laughs> and right away immediately my yeah i know a guy <laughs> i got someone who'll treat yeah. it real well actually the only time that i ever had a problem with this thing was whenever um, we were practicing your third album stuff because you mm-hmm. had the dad gad stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I had it just staying in dad gad. Well, it was dad gad, but like a half a step down. Yeah, no, so C sharp. C sharp. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um. And then 
but I always kept it. I didn't tune it back up. So mm-hmm. that was my own stupid fault. Um, uh, and then, yeah, it did warp the neck a little bit because of the weird kind of tuning and I didn't have the proper strings on it. Um, so there was a little bit of a buzzing if I think on, I mean, you'd only be able to hear it if you heard the isolated tracks because on the first Celestial Quest album, the song, uh, Leaving Earth, the second song, you're, I use this thing because that song's in D, drop D, um, and, uh, you can actually hear a little bit of the, the note buzzing. It's character. Yeah. Which, I mean, I don't know. I like that. I I like that. Some people will hate that and will just... I mean, just... People go crazy with recording. Some people literally play it note by note and then record it that way, which isn't recording. It's so so funny hearing music where it was super spliced. Yeah. Like, each note is perfect. Yeah. uh, Yeah. It just sounds stupid, if you ask me. Don't... Well, I don't know. I mean, there's some things that... No, okay. I won't say it sounds stupid. Not all of it sounds stupid. Some of it sounds cool. Like, it, to me, I don't know. I, I'm I'm pretty old school when it comes to stuff like that. Because, like, if you can't play your part, change it. Or practice more until you can. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely important to be able to play the parts. I think there is that sort of distinction to be made where the technology does exist where if you want to cut in a part yeah okay so i will also agree with that because like you know you i I feel like you should because we do have the technology use it to your full advantage if like you know if you're playing through a song and you're doing it where you're playing through and if everything's sounding good except for one spot Mm. that like you know it sounds like you, you slipped on a note or something like that or it sounds fucked up and you want everything to be nice and tight, I feel like that's a good time to actually use the technology that you have to like just take that one section, redo it until you get it good, and then put it all together. Mm-hmm. I think that is a good way to use it. But like, I mean, when you're doing every it, note individually, uh, yeah, or like you know, every third part of the song is that like it's I don't know. <laughs> It, it, I don't know. To me, it takes away the, the kind of human element, which I look for in music. I like hearing the little, like, you know, if there's a solo, if, like, you know, the, the fret is starting to buzz out at the very end of the solo while it's fading out, I think that's cool. Mm. Whereas, like, some people is like, ah, shit, like, your guitar sucks. Go get a new guitar. Let's re-record the whole thing. Or, you know. <laughs> there's actually... I think it's swallowed by thoughts. Yes. At the very end of that, it's not so much buzzing as it is this, the scratchy fret. Yeah. Yeah. It comes yeah. in at the very end of that last note. Which, again, you... I think you pointed that out to me because I never noticed it. But ever since you did point it out to me, I've always loved it since. Yeah. I know it bothers you, but I I love it. <laughs> well, I guess, like... I don't know. I don't remember it ever really like bothering you but like yeah yeah. maybe it did at the time but now it definitely it's just like it's kind of (laughs) cool well it is what it is like yeah that would have been recorded with the jb brubaker signature ibanez guitar your green and white one there which would have been pretty much brand new Mm. and then after that it did have a bunch of work done and the frets were redone. But, That's right. Uh, I remember that. Yeah. 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 It's cool stuff. Like the very last note in the Master of Puppets solo, like the string popped off the fretboard a yeah. little bit. So that little bit of an angle of the fret before it gets to like the edge of the neck, like that's mm-hmm. what it caught on. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's that really crazy like neighing horse thing. Mm-hmm. Like I think that's the note that you know it's super cool but then that's also kind of the beauty of you know you hit the red button and you see what happens yeah you know absolutely like there's a whole version of the second album that i would love just for me to listen to where it's like guys like burping (laughs) and like just the joking stuff like all of the extra like 
comments and like messed up takes like those are all the best parts yeah for me anyways yeah i don't know oh yeah absolutely like um uh this one song if you listen to the isolated track for my last words by megadeth there's like in between parts you can literally hear dave mustaine opening like up a bottle taking a sip and putting it back on and then he takes his next part Mm. (laughs) Yeah, cool stuff like that. Yeah. And I think the other thing, too, I don't know if we talked about this or not before, but it's not burp too hardly into the mic there, but <laughs> yeah, I think having grown up listening to music that was made pretty early on at a time where this technology for recording didn't exist. Mm had a really it sort of like took root subconsciously for me where again for me like you look at my music like the beyond these shores stuff and mm-hmm. like each riff is almost its own tempo yeah that's within true. a song which yeah. people hate like <laughs> working with people they're like man like you're literally a psychopath yeah having to map out the tempo for every yeah, single tempo song. changes like the riff kicks in and there's times where yeah just each riff is almost literally its own song and then mm. you know it all gets put together and for me i'm just playing it mm. so i never thought about that but then yeah like mapping tempo is out and everything it's uh i don't know it sucks for everybody else but yeah but that's the thing too that i've been kind of thinking about too because like as much as it's like i feel like the whole mapping a song out thing like just playing the riffs is so much more freeing than having to map the whole thing out, which I mean, in a studio context, like I understand, like it's kind of necessary so you can keep time and everything like that. And you know, you know how the song is actually laid out, but like whenever you're writing riffs, you're like, you have a riff pile and then you just, Oh, this riff leads into this riff really well and stuff like that. I think that's really freeing. Whereas like if you're, like your whole drums are just programmed and you have it mapped to a drum track. And then it's like, you're trying to figure it all, all this out. And I, I don't know for me anyways, whenever I'm doing stuff like that, I feel like I'm trapped and I just like, everything has to be stuck, mm. you know, whereas like whenever you're just playing and actually, you know, enjoying playing the instrument, <laughs> it's just, it's more freeing to be able to do that personally. Yeah. Although I would say it's sometimes good for the sake of exercising mm. that part of your brain where here's a drum beat riff to it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like absolutely. That's a it's a pretty interesting thing to do creatively. Mm. Because it totally influences how Yeah. You play the instrument. Yeah. Yeah. I also feel like one thing I have missed since, you know, like obviously like you know covid and everything goddamn pestilence yeah (laughs) which is it's just jamming with other people like you know you having someone behind a drum kit like you can be playing the same riff over and over and over again but then they can switch you know Mm. time signatures and stuff like that and everything the really cool thing about jamming with a drummer is you're playing a riff it's happened a few times you're not counting but you just start feeling like it's this is kind of getting old. Something's yeah. going to happen. And then your dynamics change. Like you either like, you know, ease up or like mm-hmm. start digging in. And then like the drummer's going to pick up on that. So then they throw a fill in and then it's just like, boom. Switch to something You're else. into some other riff and they're into a different drum beat and it just works. And yeah. you've never played that stuff before. You're just making it up. Like that's super cool moment. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, that definitely is. That's how... I've had a few people that I've been in bands with and, like, just even just jamming, but that's how you kind of know, like, there's just that, yeah, moment of it working that's, like, super, super cool. Yeah. Like, for me, having jammed with, like, Mac, for example, Mm -hmm. like, we recorded two albums of tracks Mm -hmm. having never jammed but then when we went to jam 
because he had written drum parts to music that I wrote. Yeah. Now for us to jam, we totally have that chemistry. And we had never jammed before. It's just like it showed up out of nowhere. Yeah. It helps when both people can like really play their instrument. That, yeah. But <laughs> yeah, there is just that total, you know, like Connection. chemistry there. Yeah. yeah. It's also like, yeah, I mean, even just, uh, all of those times like jamming with Justin, mm-hmm. you know, another good example of we didn't play any originals, but we played other tunes so much together that when it came to just that, let's just jam. Yeah. You just know each other musically so well that you do kind of have that borderline telepathy going on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And even in high school, too. Like, yeah, again, there was another uh, drummer that I was in a, a band with and we played covers and like this dude, the first song that he learned on drums was Cowboys from Hell. <laughs> and then the first song that he played in front of a crowd was Domination. Yeah. That, uh, that's, <laughs> I feel like that says a lot about it. Yeah, oh, his yeah. playing style. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, like another guy like Shane being in a band with him, he, mm. He's really good about, like, you can hear his hi-hat, like, slightly open up. Oh, to like, for a build-up and everything? Yeah, and then, like, there's these little things that you pick up on. Mm. You know, like, maybe the snare, like, there's, like, this ease-up before, like, it starts building. And there's a lot of, like, really cool things that you just get to know Yeah. about other musicians with it being, like, a, that, you know, you've just played together so much. Mm. Yeah. yeah, so, uh, b- bottom line is... Uh, I know it's hard right now, but jam with other people. It's fun. <laughs> and it's yeah. fun to build with, make chemistry. Yeah. Yeah. I miss it. <laughs> I certainly miss it. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I don't know. I think there's... Oh. And then uh, a little... Was it? A little fret buzz there. Oh, that's just my finger. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, god damn. But yeah, like, <laughs> I don't know, eventually people will be able to jam. Oh, yeah. With other people. I mean, shows are happening again, so, I mean. Yeah. I mean, some of them are getting canceled again because of... Goddamn uh, pestilence. Omicron. <laughs> Percy, I hate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's one more guitar. There is. There is, and how, I don't know, how, how long have we been recording for? Two days. Two days. <laughs> it's me, so. <laughs> don't, don't mind my face being in the camera. Oh, it's not hitting everything, too. Yeah. Very nice. And this is my newest edition that I've been wanting to do a, uh, uh, a review on, like, really badly as soon as I got it. Um. This is my Christmas gift from my parents. They uh, they paid for most of it, and then I threw in an extra two hundred bucks. And uh, yeah, hmm. this is the Epiphone SG Muse, as you can see on the headstock there, all on there. <whistles> yeah, this is uh, the Wonderlust Green one. Um, and hmm. honestly, if anybody's out there has been like you know wondering how they are, maybe they're not all like that. But uh, it, it, mine is like perfect. <laughs> like I don't have any issues with it at all, um, mm. so I don't know how the quality control is uh, at Epiphone. I think they've been pretty good lately. I think is that made in China? It was yes. I took the stickers off already, but yes, it was made in China. Um, so yeah, it's mm. uh, it's really nice. It's uh, it's twenty two fret. It's um. I don't remember what kind of fretboard this is. It almost honestly looks like rosewood, but I don't think it is. It might be like a different kind of laurel as well. I don't remember. But it sounds good. It's nice and snappy. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I like these inlays more than just the full-on blocks. Yeah. I think these look kind of cooler. Because my Les Paul's just got blocks, but these look kind of cool. 
Um, also, it's got the new Epiphone headstock. I was going to say, that headstock looks different it, than anyone I've seen on any of the Yeah, because this, this is what um, Epiphone's going with now for this 3 and 3 kind of headstock. So even on the Les Pauls, this is what they are now. They've changed hmm. it. Hmm. Yeah, it's more... Uh, it's. But they were going to do, on the Les Pauls, they were putting more of like the... The logo, like the whatever that block logo is, they were making it look more like the Gibson headstock one. Oh, really? Eh? I did not know that. Maybe that's like a vague memory from a while ago. Oh, uh, they might have been. Yeah. Doing that. Maybe not. But yeah, um, uh, yeah, no, really nice guitar. The I think these are. I think there's still the Pro Bucker Epiphone Pro Buckers, but they're like a modified Pro Bucker. So I think there's more, uh treble or something like that in there i know there's something different about these that they hadn't mentioned um but they sound really good i mean these are the kind of pro buckers are the pickups that i usually go for that and the uh burst buckers burst yeah. buckers yeah so hmm. i like them i dig them they sound really nice they're really nice and clear and everything a lot of people say that they're always muddy i don't i can i can get this one's kind of muddy a little bit but it, personally i only usually use the neck pickup for clean stuff anyways yeah i mean define mud like like is it not as clear like i would say that my jimmy von strat with the texas special pickups in it is muddy. muddy but part of the mud is they're like a higher output almost so there's a little bit of grit on it mm. Or is muddy just a lack of top end, so there's no clarity to it? The way that I've always perceived it as is the lack of top end. So it's like it's more like it's kind of just like you mush. Dump, like you take the tone off, and it, it sounds like it's coming through a wall. Yeah, and it's just yeah, it's just mushy sounding. Yeah. It's not. Well, very... how many of those people didn't check their tone knob? Yeah, that's a very good point. Like, I mean, my tone knobs are always on. First like... day on the job, eh, bud? Yeah. <laughs> No, I don't know. Maybe they I actually know. know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, possibly. But I don't know. I, I still like them. Like, on a clean tone, like like I said, I, I barely use the neck pickup for, like... Anything other than cleans, eh? Yeah, so I'm perfectly fine with how it sounds. <laughs> I don't have any issues with it. Could be pickup height, too. It could be. Like, if you, if you, you know, maybe if those people brought the pickup... Yeah, higher and A little everything. bit higher might... Because that is a huge thing Oh, too. yeah, yeah, yeah. How the polarity is being pulled or whatever. Is it a polarity thing? Yeah. Well, polarity magnets, yeah. I don't yeah. know if it's, like, a specific... Like, there is going to be that range magnetically mm. where the magnets are in relation to where the strings are. Right. So, you don't want them too close, but you don't want them too far away. There is kind of that, that Goldilocks mm. sweet spot. Right. Kind of like microphones when you're placing them on a speaker. speaker yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, what else is there to say about this thing? I really like these uh, these tuner pigs too. They're cool. How they look, or you find they feel? I uh, just just how they look, like aesthetically, mm. like more than the like the little kidney bean ones there. Mm. But yeah, really really nice. Um, it is a, a set neck. It's not bolt on. Um, I like how plain the back is too. I have a plane, all of it is, but then, like, aesthetically, it also just looks very sharp, too, because of how everything kind of is. Yeah, it's got some curves to it. Yeah. Kind of a nice, like, subtle sort of sparkle to it. Yeah, it is, It is like, a metallic green, but, yeah. I like that they didn't match the headstock on the front with the paint job. So it's not a green, it's, it's black, yeah. Yeah, that's one thing that gibson tends to do well it's just it kills me when fender matches the headstock on the front to the color of the body but that's like the snobby obnoxious purist in me mm. thinking that the headstock should just be the wood look okay i see yeah, not even a gloss just just yeah straight up wood see that again that that's i i personally I, maybe i do enjoy the black on this um and on most guitars, but on Jackson's, like with a like a King V or a Rhodes or something like that, I personally do enjoy the look of a matched body and headstock color. Hmm. Yeah, especially if it's like a crazy color. So it's like if it's like a really bright orange or something like that. Like like in my head, I'm visualizing a red on a Rhodes. A red Rhodes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I would still like prefer it with a matching headstock. Even if it was like a more subtle color, like a blue. Yeah, absolutely. Weird. Yeah, that's just me though. Like, for like red roads doesn't it's a black headstock, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I don't know if it's a flashy color for a flashy guitar. I want it to be all sleek. I don't want too much flashy. (laughs) Oh really? I feel like having the headstock matched makes it more flashy. Oh really? Hmm. Yeah. Well, otherwise it would just be like a plain black color, and that's true. I don't know. I guess I do just like flashy shit. Yeah, I've also noticed that too. Like my guitar collection is starting to become way more colorful from whenever I started playing. Because before I always liked black, black and kind of whites. But like Mm -hmm. now I'm, I mean I've got an orange guitar, I've got a blue guitar, I've got a green guitar. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I guess for me. My Squire Strat was like a dark blue. Yeah. But definitely lately, like, I don't know, white guitars I just kind of gravitate to. Yeah. Although my telly's red, sometimes kind of almost looks orange. Yeah, your, your sparkle, your apple. Is it is that the one I'm thinking of? Well, it's red. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's got like a fancy color name like that I, or not, but... Because I thought there was a can, uh, candy apple red... There is a candy apple red, but it, my tell is not a candy apple red. Oh, oh yeah. I thought it was that one. Cause what's your other telly? Just wood? Ah, uh, it's white, but you can kind of see like the grain through it a little bit. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I don't think I've seen that one yet, actually. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Is that the one with that you have the um, warmouth guitar on, or is that your red one? No, the red one's got the warmouth neck. That. Uh... Yeah, the other one's a Squire Telly. It's like their Ventura series from a while ago. I guess there was a guy who did lessons in North Bay who sold it. Oh, okay. And then that was one of those things where I was thinking about going in to Long and McQuaid. And Squire also does a uh, like a butterscotch blonde, like a $300 telly kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So what I was thinking was, okay, so you bought like, I'll buy that, and then I'll order some bare knuckle telly pickups, and I'll get some like go to tuners, go to bridge, and mm-hmm. you know throw that into it. Be like five, six hundred bucks into the guitar, and then it'll be kind of like a sleeper guitar. Like mm-hmm. people will see that and not think too much of it, but it's actually like but it's worth pretty killer. Like, yeah, <laughs> I really like the neck on those because it was super chunky and unfinished. So after playing it a whole bunch, like you just kind of like you know like. Your sweat and yeah, everything will get into that, and it'll be uh, pretty comfortable to play. But I was walking in, and I walked into the Long McQuaid, and I saw the butterscotch guitar on the wall, and so I just started walking over, and I walked past this. You know, I had like these aisles set up, and around to my left, it was like as I'm walking by in the peripherals, there's just a guitar stand there with a bunch of guitars, and I turn and I look. And there was the te- the uh, the one Squire Telly, and I look at that Telly, and there was just kind of you know as cheesy as it is that moment of like yo oh, yeah yeah. <laughs> so I just made like a mental note of that. Go over, try the other one, play it, and then I go grab the other one, try that, and went back and forth a couple times. But then with the uh, the one that I ended up getting, it was just. I like it's a really thin neck, so I don't like that. Mm. And it's a gloss, like on the fretboard and okay. the headstock, so I'm not pumped on that. But I don't know. I just had the mojo, hmm. so I went with that. It turns out that the dude had put Seymour Duncan noiseless pickups in it. That's a bonus. So I got those with the guitar, <laughs> and I still have the original Tele pickups that it came with. Well, and it was like four hundred bucks. Yeah, that's. I mean, what kind of what kind of Seymour Duncan's? Just noiseless pickups. Just whatever Seymour Duncan yeah. noiseless ones. Yeah. I mean, yeah, because depending on which Seymour Duncan's they actually are, like, I mean, those might be like four hundred dollars themselves. Yeah, like, they're probably like two hundred, maybe. Yeah. Nothing too too fancy, but. Uh, yeah. Hmm. But, for the record, you know, 
as cool as those pickups are, they don't even come close to what Zero. the Gristletone Fishman Tele pickups are because those pickups are the bomb diggity. Mm. <laughs> yeah, like you can just hear it. Like, kind of the joke is with the Fishman Gristletone pickups, they're more, more. Like, they're just more. Oh, okay. <laughs> and if you, like, I'll, I'll have to bring my tellies and a, you can AB them for fun one time. Yeah. But. The Seymour Duncan ones, again, like, that's a really great pickup company. Like, the Alpha Omega pickups, the Mark uh, Holcomb signature yeah. ones, love those pickups. Mm-hmm. Really great. And you really like your Black Winners. Yeah. But comparing the Noiseless one to the Fishman one. It's just no comparison. Like, if I, if I play the Seymour Duncan ones first, oh, that's cool. Mm. Go to the Fishman, then it's just like, whoa, dude. <laughs> These are just better. Huh. Just totally absolutely better pickups you know huh. and then even like doing that like going back and forth between the two it was uh yeah super noticeable hmm speaking on pickups you know which pickups that i always thought i did like when i first bought the guitar but then actually turns out lately i do not like at all do i get the guess it's a it's a, it's a guitar, right? Yeah. And they're probably humbuckers because you don't have many single coil. Yeah. It's a guitar you probably haven't been playing a lot lately because you don't like the sound of the pickups. I'm trying to think of like guitars. I don't know. I did just mention your Black and Winter ones, so I don't know if it would be those ones or not. No. I, I still do enjoy those ones. I do prefer those ones for like... The full, more like Forbidden Messiah stuff, like the full blown like metal, not really doing too many crazy intricate mm. like stringy stuff. Um, it's not your red LTD guitar. No, I actually do. I, I do actually really love my. Uh, the, I want to guess like your Chapman pickups. No, but those actually sound really good. Too. <laughs> Most of your other guitars are like Pro Bucker. Oh, is it not? No, because your Snow Falcon has Pro Buckers or Burst Buckers. Burst Buckers. Yeah, which is the same as the ghost horse. Yeah. I'm trying to think of your other guitars. <laughs> Unless it's that Aerodyne guitar. No. It's not that one. I'm trying to complete blank on what your other guitars are. <laughs> you only have the one last Paul, right? Yeah, no, I don't I don't have another. with humbuckers I'm trying to think of what other guitars do you have not your uh no because your kelly you put pro buckers in that right yeah i mean i did have emgs in it uh, this is not the guitar but i did have emgs in it and i took them out yeah what about your other jackson oh is it your your red jackson yeah yeah okay yeah yeah, yeah because those are the duncan designed uh pickups and uh pretend invaders yeah I plugged it in before I came up because I because I was just, before I came up I was like shooting out all my guitars like which ones I wanted to use and holy shit like they just are muddy and just really high gain mm. and they're just the kind of pickup the fourteen fifteen year old yeah metallica megadeth fan would love uh, yeah man. like not to bash on those guys no you know. but i mean like that's like you know if you do want to get that like super overdrivenly sustained like gain kind of sound where you just like you do this you know for like ever like mm-hmm. yeah it's super fun and cool because you know you get that low end rumble and everything but like to do anything like yeah, where you want more gain. note definition with yeah. full chords. Yeah. Uh, horrible. Completely bad. <laughs> and even for leads, like, because there's a certain lead sound that I really like. It's like, again, with the note definition, it's still gain, but, like, it's very clean sounding. That's the kind of lead tone that I personally enjoy, whereas, like, those sound really fuzzy again like as if someone threw a blanket over a speaker mm. for that like muddy kind of sound like uh, too many mids kind of yeah too many mids but like also too much low end and like way too overdriven <laughs> so I'm just like in my mind the kind of worst tone you can get mm. <laughs> just, 
And there's a, there's a time and a place for that kind of tone, but not, not for me. Hmm. Yeah, so. It might be just in that guitar, too, because I have swapped pickups between um, uh, guitars before, and, like, sometimes I like it in one guitar and not in the other, because I have switched um, my Kelly, my Jackson Kelly. I put those pickups there into my Jackson Kelly before. Still didn't like them too much, but, like, I did like them better than in my Rhodes. Okay, so you put the Pro Buffers in the Rhodes. Yeah. And they sound better in the Kelly. Yeah. But I'm I'm still like still was talking about yeah. the uh the, the Duncan design one there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. you know <sighs> Duncan designed. Yeah. Bless him. It is a bit of a cheaper pickup. Yeah. To, you know, slapping a cheaper guitar and Yeah, exactly. I totally want to try the bare knuckle polymath out though. Which ones are those? That's Nolly Get Good Signature. Oh yeah, yeah those. Super big time tempted to order one and put it in my Ropa Latvala guitar, <laughs> just as a workaround of having to buy two to get the set. It's yeah, cheaper to buy one, but yeah, because how much does the set cost? Uh, I mean, by the time you. Do the currency conversion, like the British pound destroys the Canadian dollar. Yeah. So for two, you're looking probably four, maybe 500 bucks. I mean, if you have to pay not just shipping, but uh, duty. Yeah. It, uh, it'll add up. Dang. But yeah. And then I also like don't play guitar too much anymore either. So mm. it's like. Kind of. Yeah. And then I'll have the original HZ pickup that that came with the uh 81x so i don't know anybody who'd want to start like buying pickups yeah not me i'm not a fan of emg yeah. <laughs> i i would be interested though because emg does have a couple of sets of um like passive, passive pickups, pickups. Yeah. i would be interested into trying those out well the hz is a passive pickup. oh is it okay because i know david sanchez uh the vocalist and main guitarist of uh havoc he he has emgs and they're passive but i mean that's also you know obviously in the studio he's going through how many different amps and everything like that so Mm -hmm. that also plays a huge factor but i do like his guitar tone a lot so especially off of his latest his newest album there so yeah well i do believe it's been like over an hour so how about we do uh this week's song recommendation and then we'll wish you all a happy holidays oh well i gotta try to figure out what that song is then from the tea party okay yeah yeah all right i'll i'll entertain the folks while you do that yeah maybe i'll just look at you while you look (laughs) well um yeah this one was uh one of those tunes where a guy at a party shout out to stavy good old alberta boy (laughs) it uh (laughs) He, he told me, he was just, you have to learn this guitar, and I haven't learned it yet. Oh. Uh, you learned the song. <laughs> Remember, you can't play it. I also get to... Uh, uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> if it goes quiet for a minute, you know why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tea party. That, that's what the band's called? Tea yeah. party? No, oh, okay. They uh, are they English? Oh, winter solstice. I'm pretty sure. So you might have to mute this while I double check. Okay, that's fine. I'll mute it. <laughs> oh yeah. So yeah, winter solstice by the Tea Party. I don't know why green was popping out of my head. Green? Maybe it's because this was in your front of your face. No. No. I'm just losing my goddamn mind. So anyways, <laughs> winter solstice by the Tea Party. Okay. Banger of a tune. Yeah. Yeah. There you go, everybody. Go check that out. It uh, it has some cool 12-string stuff. Yeah, there's actually two guitars in it. And, uh, yeah, like, I think it's open C, 12-string. Sounds awesome. Hmm. Yeah. There you go, everybody. Anyways, with that, we wish you all a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, and a Happy Holidays. Do you have anything else to add? 
Uh, I mean, we already pretty much said the whole happy holiday thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll see you. Catch you next time. Yeah. You know, shiny side up. Keep your stick on the ice. Yeah. Well, what is it? Oh, I'm trying to remember what he used to say. Keep your stick on the ice. Remember, I'm, I don't know, I'm, I'm pulling, rooting for you. We're all in this together. Old red green. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, I, I've only watched red green a handful of times. Yeah. Yeah. Keep your stick on the ice. Yeah. Good enough. Yeah. And then you say the weird like later thing or whatever you do, and then the music comes in super loud. Yeah, well, I, I've, I've changed the sense, so it's not. Is it still loud? The last time I, w- I you know, yeah, I'm ready to like start busting balls in the comment section. Like, I love how quiet the talking is, and then you turn it up so you can hear what's being said, and then your head gets torn off because the music comes in. Yeah, because I know for a while I did have it like not like equaled out as at all. Yeah. I think I've got it pretty equaled out now. We'll see. We'll see, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Goodbye, everybody.